Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what I'm going to be doing is testing a couple different things out. I've played with my um, display settings so it should be a little bit easier for you guys to see the things that we're doing in the procedure editor today as well as uh, we're going to be looking at a couple blocks that I covered previously but I noticed that I got a couple things wrong back in the day so I wanted to clear those up and basically redo the tutorial on these particular blocks as um, a lot of information was left out because I was still not sure how the blocks worked or how they functioned but I'm uh, pretty much a pro at it now so I can basically break down a couple of these blocks so the blocks that we have in today uh, we're going to be looking at the um, just working with a general block here uh, the reason why this why we're working with this is because there are a couple blocks in this particular procedure that we can actually um, not have anything to do with entities and this will be perfect for actually demonstrating how these blocks work so update ticks don't actually have any entity support for dependencies now this is the dependencies that basically it supports for the element so as you can see update tick only has x y and z so coordinate based things uh, world which are world based things and block states so um, there is no entity one which is very important when we're actually going to be working with a procedure uh, reason for this is when we actually start with a procedure uh, our dependencies on the side will show that we start working with an entity now say we want to make an entity velocity go up if it's not on the ground or something within a certain perimeter of the block we want to make them actually float up uh, we can do that uh, but technically we can't with an update tick which is a little bit problematic if you want to make something like an air tube uh, for example if we want to do that we would have to use a entity block for velocity uh, move motion vector so we would have to use this particular block right here However, as soon as we put it onto the actual thing, you can notice that the required dependencies now require entity, which uh, going back to the tab, update tick doesn't actually have the dependency for entities. So what can we do to actually fix this? Now, this is actually really easy. Uh, if we go down to world data, there is a few blocks we at the bottom here get nearest entity and then there's the coordinates so we will need the coordinates for this to work in square cube of size and then a size now this is measured um i believe the total distance of the center so it's not radius i believe it's the entire diameter of where it's going to be so if you wanted it to be something like a center block then it's going to be basically testing in the area around the block so for example if we're testing it at uh, 0 0 0 and we have it set to 4 then it will be a little bit uh, shaped a little bit half so it'll be um, probably about the center of the block where the coordinates is but it's going to also be 0.5 or so off onto the each side so if you want to make it make sure that it's centered for the block so when we actually do this there are two blocks here that we need the first one on the top which is actually the one that we use for the entity is going to test for the entity within that certain radius but it also requires the one that's below for does entity exist now the reason why we actually have to test for both of them is because if you don't test if the entity exists you actually will crash the game so for example all you need to do is basically test for the same radius so say we're going to test uh, we'll just say 16 17 blocks away from the thing and then we're going to set a um, entity that is going to basically push up so I'm going to just set it to animals for now and then what I'm going to do is basically if in 17 blocks radius of this particular block I'm going to offset this to the 0 0.5 so it's in the center of the block exactly 
And then what I need to do is basically replace this block right here with the other block. So we're going to go 0 0.5 and we're just going to make sure that the radius for the X, Y, and Z for the testing coordinates for this, where this block is going to be, or this procedure is going to be running from is center of the block. So it's not going to run into any issues. Now, the reason why we're doing that is again, then it's a complete cube around the block itself. Uh, now the blocks still have the access point when you use these particular X, Y, and Z at the access point of the block. So if you want to make it center, you have to make sure that it's uh, 0 0.5 off. So once we have that, you, you'll notice that there is no particular entity that we're testing for at the moment. So that's good. Uh, we can go to entity data or pardon me, world data again, and then scroll down and then get the nearest entity. We're going to pop plop that in. And you also notice that it's still not testing for the entity. So we're going to add the animal entity as well. And then we're going to make sure that the cube disk cube distance is the same as the one that we're testing for. It can be under that radius, but it's probably best to keep it no higher than what you set this value to. Um, I haven't tested it with uh, point form or anything like that. So you probably want to just keep it a solid number just in case. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is make sure that the same coordinates are set up for where this particular procedure, this test in the entity is being run from and tested from. So for example, this is all that we need to do. Now we just need to make sure that the velocity of the entity will go up a little bit. So for example, once it gets to a certain point, um, what we want to do is we want to just basically get it to stop um, flying. So that will basically be 16 blocks from the ground or where the block is from the center of it, which should be a little bit less. It should be divided by two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to velocity of 0 0.5. That should be pretty fast, but still give it enough time to travel up. Um, we might also, yeah, we'll just leave it for animals so it doesn't affect players. So that's basically the system, how those two blocks work. Now, again, if you were to put this outside of here and just test for the nearest entity, you're probably going to crash your game. That's why this block is really important to test for if the entity does exist already. And it's always going to get the nearest entity um, to where the block or where the uh, procedure is running from. So, for example, it, the closest entity to the um, actual procedure for the where the block is being run to run from will always be able to uh, be tested for and this will apply to it first now if it uh, skips and it kind of there's multiple entities and it'll kind of alterate between the nearest one uh, you'll see how this basically works with the procedure once we get this all set up so as you can see uh, down here the gradle basically has compiled perfectly fine uh, we can just save the mod element and then we'll pop in game and quickly test uh, the script. So we, we're in game now and I'm just gonna find a spot that will pretty much suit our area that we're gonna be testing this from. Uh, there's some sheep over here so we'll be able to place down a block quickly and just kind of test it. And whoop, uh, not throw the block but test, <laughs> place it. So we'll just go over here and we'll place that down. Now, as you can see, the sheep starts flying off and it's going to get the nearest entity. So it can actually do two, but it's always going to be doing the nearest entity for basically um, moving it up. So in this case, the sheep is uh, being targeted second and it's not close enough. So if we were to break this, the chicken's going to fall down there. Uh, we're just going to make a small isolated area. So the entities can't just get out of the thing. So we'll do something like, uh, that might not be big enough. And then we'll just build up the walls a little bit. And then we can place the block down in the center. And then I'll show you that we can basically test this. I'm just gonna go grab a couple pigs over here and we can put them in here. 
So as you can see, it kind of alternates between the two and it will kind of target the nearest one that is closest to the actual thing. So once it gets up to that point, it basically won't go any higher. And because the gravity is a lot higher uh, for the entity to fall, it'll get to the point where it won't be able to go any higher and then it'll just kind of fall down. So at this point, when it gets down to this part right here, it kind of gets up to this point and then it'll just stop going up to that point. So again, it will try finding the nearest entity. It might not work for all systems that you might need it for, but uh, for example, it does work uh, for targeting things outside of the um, actual entity dependency, which can help in certain circumstances. So my conclusion for this is it does help, but it's not exactly the best thing for testing specific entities. It's really hard to actually test for a specific entity uh, because it will target groups instead of um, things that like right click actions and stuff like that. So uh, in a sense, it, it will be a good block to work with in certain circumstances like if you wanted to test for um, something to basically link up to something or the nearest entity but other than that um, it's a little bit harder to work with but it can uh, sort out certain mechanics if you really wanted it to um, again it allows you to use a lot of the entity blocks for things that don't support it so if you wanted to despawn or anything that uses the target slash um, event entity uh, then you can basically use that you can even apply potion effects uh, things like this would all work uh, potion effects uh, you can do execute commands things like that so even apply mbt would work uh, you would have to run it from the uh, the entity side but you would basically target the entity and maybe run something on the entity side instead but you could um, for example if you wanted to make sure the pig continued to go up rather than basically doing the movement velocity here you could just assign a mbt tag instead and then you could basically tell the mbt tag for the entity if it's a custom entity to constantly go up if they have that now if it's a uh, for example, a vanilla entity, then you might want to use something like um, a status effect, and then you would basically use the time for the duration for the effect of the actual potion to make them go up instead, but you could run it and apply the effect through the um, block update tick. Now, it can support any procedure type because it does only require your x y and z and world dependencies uh so yeah that's basically um all there is to it if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below with the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out